Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video. So in this one, I wanted to try doing another kind of like general advice type of video as opposed to, you know, normally when I do um, gameplay or like strategy videos, I'm playing a specific deck and I'm talking about that deck. But I wanted to talk more in general about uh, climbing the ranked ladder up to Platinum 1. Um, from a more general standpoint as opposed to with a specific deck. So, um, you know, at the time that I am recording this, we're still really early into Season 4. It actually just is after midnight of the second on my time. And, yep, as you can see, we managed to get up to Platinum 1 already. Um, I managed to set a new record for myself this season, and I got up to Platinum 1 um, 13 hours after the... Uh, after the season changed, and I, I mean, God, if you look at my videos, you'll see, like, in my, you know, titles, like, oh, Trapper Kid Zodiac, Platinum One, blah, 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 and I know, I know, it's like, I, I sound like I'm like, bragging, I was gonna say exaggerating, I sound like I'm bragging, I'm just, I gotta be honest, I'm pretty proud of myself, uh, I can't lie about that, but, uh, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about it, and then I'll show you also my match history, um, so that you can see, you know, proof that I climbed up uh, when I said I did, so there we are. Um, but yeah, no, I wanted to, you know, take this time to talk about laddering because I feel like now I finally have the prerequisites to be like, okay, here's good general tips for laddering. Um, honestly, one of the first and most important tips that I can give you is choosing your deck wisely. Um, that is going to be uh, like probably the biggest thing about it. Let's actually move over to my deck section, and then I can talk a little bit more about how I picked the decks that I laddered with. Okay, so here we are. These are my decks that I currently have built here. You can see I've got, uh, well, I've got, really I've got 10, not 11, because one of them is the Normal Rare Rarity Festival. We're still got that going on. I was using Normal Rare Tri Brigade <clears throat> for that, excuse me. So, um, yeah, so when it comes to laddering and getting up to Platinum 1, especially doing it at a good pace, um, the most important thing, like I alluded to earlier, is picking the right deck. Now, what does that mean, picking the right deck? Does that mean picking, like, a good Tier 1 meta deck? Does that mean picking a deck I like? Does that mean picking a deck I'm good at? And the answer is that it's, in a way, it's kind of a little bit of everything, but the most important aspect of it is that you... There's the latter two, is that you like the deck and that you know the deck well. Uh, knowing the deck well is honestly the most important thing. And in my opinion, you really should have one, maybe two, but ideally one deck that you're really, really skilled at. And that is going to be the main deck that you focus on climbing the ladder with. Now for me, that deck is obviously gonna be Tri Brigade Zoo deck because I've been playing this deck literally since I started playing Master Duel. Um, I think I started jumped on like, like three or four days after it came out, so it would have been the 21st or 22nd of January. So like over, over two months at this point, um, I've been playing pretty much, uh, I don't know, I was gonna say nothing but, it's not been nothing but Tri Brigade Zodiac, but probably about 50% of my games on Master Duel in general, I would say, if I had to guess, were with Tri Brigade Zodiac. Um, the vast majority of my laddering games have been with Tri Brigade Zodiac as well. However, I did also decide to use Ad Emancipator for my climb from gold to platinum specifically. Um, the, now, here's the thing with Ad Emancipator. I was actually ready to build this deck at the end of season two. And I had this idea that like, oh, I can build it at the end of the season now, get a little bit of practice in, and then I can climb with it in season three. But I decided not to do that. And the reason that I decided not to do that was because Honestly, I knew getting like a few days of practice with the deck in right at the end of a season was not going to cut it for laddering with the deck effectively. Um, but that's why I was putting out as many Ad Emancipator videos as I did throughout the course of Season 3 once I would got to Platinum 1. That whole month was me playtesting this deck in anticipation of using it for the uh, part of the climb uh, for Season 4. Um, you really, really want to make sure that whatever deck you're using, you've got to know it well. And, like, knowing not only 
um, all of the combos and plays with the deck, but also knowing, you know, what your own choke points are when you get negated, um, what you can do, you know, if you get stopped, how you play against certain matchups. Like, there's so many ins and outs to knowing uh, each individual deck. So I picked Adam Ancipator and Triviate Zodiac as my decks to climb with because I knew them well, I had a lot of playtest time with them, and I was confident in their power as decks. I mean, I've also played a lot with, like, um, you know, Tribrigade Lyralesk, but uh, this deck I feel is a little bit too vulnerable to climb the ladder this early on in the, in the season. Um, the other thing, too, about picking your deck is that um, the deck you want to pick kind of de the decks that you can feasibly get away with getting to plat one with, it's going to kind of depend on what point in the season you're at. If you're really early in the season like I am, you should probably have like a tier one deck like Tribrigade Zodiac or maybe like Drytron <clears throat> or Virtual World or like, you know, a tier two deck like Ad Emancipator or um, where is Eldritch? Oh yeah, Golden Boy, here it is. Or Eldritch would be fine as well. Um, but this early on, just know that you're going to be facing a lot of meta decks. And not only are you going to be facing a lot of meta decks, once you get up to Platinum, you're going to be facing a lot of very skilled players. Obviously, people who've gotten up to Platinum to this point, uh, at this point in the season, are fairly good. I mean, you know, anyone who can get up to Platinum, I would say, is, you know, at least decent at the game. But um, as the season goes on, obviously more and more people get up to Platinum. Um, and the more people get into Platinum, the overall... Um, skill pool gets diluted a bit as a result. So um, if you're like mid to late season, then you could get away. I mean, I was going to say get away with Tribrigade Lyralisk. You, you could get away with Tribrigade Lyralisk now if you're good enough with the deck. That was the other thing is like, not only is this deck a bit more vulnerable than something like Tribrigade Zodiac, but I'm also not as skilled with it because I haven't played with it as much. Uh, obviously, if you're if this is the only deck you've ever used in Master Duel up to this point, but then yeah, you could probably get away with getting up to Plat 1 with something like Tribrigade Lyralisk uh, this early on. But, I mean, even something more fun, like, or I say fun, but I mean more rogue, like a, a pure Zoo. I was going to say Numeron, Numeron's not fun. <laughs> Let's be real, Numeron's not fun. But like a Zoo, pure Zoo, or like an Altergeist, or a Homebrew, like this Birdman OTK. Um, you know, you could still feasibly get up to Platinum 1 with a deck like that, especially if you know it well, but it would probably have to be a little bit later on in the season um, before you would have, I don't want to say, like, success with it. That's not to play. You couldn't be successful sooner, but um, to have more of an easier time getting up to, let's just, let's just say it that way. Um, the other thing, too, about picking your deck is that you don't want to be too diverse in your deck like quote unquote portfolio uh, in terms of what you're playing with to climb up to plat one. That is to say, um, you know, I've got like 10 decks here, but I would never try to get to plat one like using all 10 of these decks during, you know, throughout the climb. You really want to stick to one, again, maybe two if you're reasonably confident in your skills with multiple decks, but. I guess three if you happen to know three decks particularly well, but even at that point I think you're stretching yourself a bit thin. It's best to do it with one and that's why in previous seasons I have only used Tribrigade Zodiac and that's why when I got up to platinum from gold this season I only used Tribrigade Zodiac. It was because I know that deck so so well and I am like very very confident in it because you know it's the only deck I've used for laddering up to this point. It's I, I I know when I see a hand, you know, obviously there's still thinking involved, but generally speaking, I can pick out, I can see a hand, I can pick out all my lines of plays uh, just by observing the hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so now that I've kind of talked about, like, the process of picking a deck and how to go about that, let's actually look at the decks that I climbed with, and then I'll go ahead and talk about some of my card choices, uh, particularly relating to climbing the ladder up to plat one. Okay, so this is the Ad Emancipator deck that we got up from Gold 5 to Plat 5 with the start of the season. If you've seen my Ad Emancipator, you know, Season 4 deck profile video or the uh, the video that followed it where I showed off a bunch of games, then you're already familiar with the build. But this is the build that I use here. Um, I'm not going to go through it card by card, but tell you what, I'll go ahead and throw links in the description down to uh, the latest deck profile and the combo guide for this build. Uh, so you can go ahead and check them out there. But... As far as like why I use this deck in gold specifically and not platinum is because 
I knew there were going to be more meta decks in Platinum than Gold. Specifically, I figured that anybody who was really climbing early with Drytron would probably be in Platinum by the time I got on. Well, I mean, I guess I got on right when the season changed, but I, I just I knew I was going to see more Drytron in Platinum than I was in Gold. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that sure enough did, did sure enough did end up being the case. So um, obviously, Ad Emancipator's matchup against Drytron is tends to not be that great, and definitely not as good as Tribrigade Zodiacs. But um, so yeah, I wanted to use this deck for laddering still though. So I figured you know I can go ahead and use it in gold. Um, which ended up actually being the right call because we end up hitting a pretty nice win streak, taking us from gold four up to plat five uh, with the deck here. Now, you might be thinking, like, why would you want to use Ad Emancipators if you're trying to ladder quickly? Doesn't this deck have pretty infamously uh, long first turns? And yeah, it does. It can have fairly long first turns. However, especially in the weeks leading up to the season change, I had been practicing a lot with this deck off screen, and I'd reached a point where, like, I was not only comfortable identifying lines of play, but I'd also gotten comfortable, like, going through the motions of clicking, like, you know, when you summon Roxy, it's like, okay, boom, you summon Roxy, you click the extra deck, you go from Yam Yam Moo, and then you click yes, and then you go, you know, Dropsies, and then you click yes for Dropsies, and, and I know that sounds kind of, like, weird, like, is, is clicking through the menus really a skill? But yes, it actually is in a way, because we do have the timer and you do have to be mindful of that so um, it is nice to be able to get the motions down of being like okay when I make this play I need to go to the extra deck to get the meow 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 and then I click yes for the drop sees and then the drop sees for the you know what I mean like it's it's nice to be able to go through the motions quickly so I was fairly confident not only in my ability to identify the correct lines of play but also to be able to do it in a timely manner um, of course, you know, we, I did still end up making misplays along the way. I mean, it's only human. I don't want to, like, come off as, like, I did everything perfectly, so this is exactly how you should do it. Uh, I'm just, you know, offering advice, tips, and tricks based on my experiences here, and, um... Yeah, I think acknowledging your misplays, we can kind of go ahead and segue into this a little bit. I was going to talk about this later, but I brought up misplaying, so why not? We'll talk about it now. As far as misplaying goes, you really have to get yourself in a mental state where you can't let misplays affect you. Um, we're all going to misplay. It's all going to happen. We're, we're only human. We don't play perfectly every single time. There are some duelists who would like you to believe that they play perfectly every single time, but they just don't. It's just a fact of life. Nobody's perfect. So... Um, that's the, honestly, as, as much as it sounds like, you know, duh, right, of course that's the case, you really do have to mentally accept it before you can get to a level where you're not tilting from your own misplays. Um, like one, for example, that I made in, you know, the, one of the videos I recorded was this Gallant Granite misplay, right? Where I summon Gallant Granite and I go to activate its effect and instead of adding Block Dragon, I accidentally add Gigantes because for some reason when I go to search, I think I'm searching for Block Dragon and then I go and click Gigantes. Now, as soon as you make that misplay, it would be so easy to be like, ah, Dang it, I messed up. Oh, now I don't have access to Block Dragon. Oh, this game is ruined. And then you just go surrender immediately. But we actually ended up winning that game. And we did it because we were able to still set up a play where we went into our Union Carrier and then Union Carrier. And we did it with the Gigantes, too. We used the Gigantes to go into a Union Carrier. Union Carrier equipped a Block Dragon to a monster in our field, which we then linked away for Appalusia. And then we were still able to get our Block Dragon search. <clears throat> Obviously, the play was not optimal. Obviously, it still would have been better to just grab, you know, Block Dragon off of Gallant Granite like you're supposed to. But, in lieu of being able to do that, we were still able to actually uh, set up a board where we were able to have, you know, fight off our opponent. And then we were, it was a bit more back and forth than it would have, you know, normally otherwise been. But, I was still able to win that game. So, yeah, you just gotta, like, try to get to yourself to a level where... I mean, it's okay to, you know, be upset for a moment. You know, I when I added the Gigantes, I did have a second of, like, ah, oh, what did I do? I said that out loud. I'm like, oh, what did I just do? But then, you know, just got to pause, take a breath. <sighs> I even told myself out loud afterward, it's fine. We can still make a block dragon. We can still get to block dragon with the Union Carrier. It's fine. 
Um, you gotta train yourself, that's another like tip I've got for you, is just training yourself to have a right mental state, to always be looking for an out, even in a situation where you do something like misplay. It's like, okay, you just have to accept, these are the current circumstances of the game. What is the correct line of play given the current circumstances of the game? And even if you misplay, you would just have to accept that that is the current circumstance of the game. The only next step is to not get mad, the next step is to not concede, the next step is to find the best line of play given the current circumstances. That's You just have to train yourself to always be looking out for that. Um, now it might seem like, well, how are you able to do that? Like, how can you have that kind of like concentration? So there are actually a couple of steps that I personally take to ensure that I do have that level of concentration. Uh, one, I, I typically, not always, but I typically don't watch YouTube videos or like a TV show or a movie in the background. Um, I mean, generally speaking, yeah, I'll do that if I'm just playing casually, but if I'm like, if I'm really buckling down on ladder and I'm like, okay, I'm going to like really dedicate this time to climbing up to platinum one, then I don't have any distracting factors like that. Uh, personally, I do mute the game audio and I put on music still. Uh, the music that I listen to is kind of like, um, the specific genre, if you've ever heard of it, is actually called Down Tempo. Uh, not metal. There's actually two Down Tempos. One is metal. Um, I don't listen to metal personally. Um, the Down Tempo I'm referring to is like electronic music. It's kind of like electronica, but like at a half beat. Um, but it tends to be more instrumental songs. So I like that kind of like chill out instrumental music. Um, I find that is extremely helpful for not only maintaining a level head by, you know, main maintaining a you know relatively calm state um but also the fact that the music is specifically instrumental means that the lyrics don't like distract me i mean sometimes i'll throw in some songs with you know some lyrics here and there sure whatever but um i think there's even been studies that show that listening to instrumental music uh can help you concentrate better so uh, I guess if you're looking for specific band recommendations, which I never thought I'd be making in a Master Duel video, but here we are. I really like Bonobo, Emancipator, um, Fortet. Who's another good one? Burial. Oh, I love Burial. Um, I feel like there's one other band I always go to. Um, oh, Tycho. That's another good one. Um, those are kind of some of my go-to bands, not only for just listening in general, but specifically for just easy going, chill out, but still like upbeat, like engaging in that regard, uh, music, uh, in, that I listen to while I ladder. And again, I do find that extremely helpful, so... Okay, sorry about that. I got into a huge tangent talking about general tips while I was actually talking about Adam Emancipator specifically. So, um, yeah, this build. So... I did include a few tech choices specifically for laddering. Um, what I mean when I say that is that, you know, before in my old build, it was the Sekka's Light build. And that build is much more, excuse me, who? Oh. My old build, which had Tinny Spirit Adaharas as an extender, and Sekka's Light as fuel to draw into more combo pieces, that was a very combo-centric build of the deck. But... If you're laddering up to plat one, you want to build your deck in a way where it can actually handle various scenarios, whether you're going first, whether you're going second, whether you're playing from behind, whether you're playing from ahead, whether you, you know, can combo off and you're not interrupted, whether you get stopped by hand traps, whether you have to deal with floodgates, you know, you, you have to consider all these different factors um, because they are all going to come up during the course of your ladder play. So uh, for that reason, I took out the Tenny Spirit Adaharas, I took out the Three Seconds Light, and... Oh, I was playing two Nibiru, but I actually took one out. But Nibiru was still actually uh, a, a spot for, um, like, a response card. And basically, by taking out those six cards, I was able to add a Tackle Crusader, which is very nice for, you know, flipping face-up monsters face down or bouncing face-up spells and traps, basically floodgates, you know, monsters or spells and traps that keep us from special summoning. When Tackle Crusader gets sent to the graveyard, it can pretty much take care of one of those for us. Uh, and in the spell department, we added a Lightning Storm. Uh, this is mostly to handle back row. I was thinking about including Harpy's Feather Duster, but then I thought about it more and I realized, you know, I'm 
going to be using Harpies for the rest of going second to clear back row anyway, right? So in that regard, Lightning Storm should be better because it's more flexible. We're using it going second anyway, and it can potentially destroy monsters instead of back rows if we need it to. So that's how I landed on the Lightning Storm here. Called wise, obviously very important for negating Max C and other hand traps that stop at Emancipators. Generally, if it's just an Ash or something, you most of the time can just play through that and not have to negate it. Um, but Max C obviously is detrimental to this deck. We always want to have a way to stop it. So. Uh, call by is very important. Even if it's not call by specifically that's negating the max C, you know, there could be scenarios where you could um, still negate, again, other hand traps like Ash um, or just stuff like that. Um, obviously, call by is also a good general utility card against graveyard effects like Eldritch Golden Lord, Tri Brigade effects, etc., etc., but um, it's mostly here to negate max C. 95% of the reason it's in this deck is to negate max C. Finally, we've also got a pair of Forbidden Droplets, and these are again in here for more uh, general use, right? Um, for going second, for specifically playing against Drytron, which we are definitely seeing an uptick in it, the play of Drytron, especially as the new season is beginning. So it's important to have um, more tech in mind against decks that are seeing play uh, in the ladder. That's kind of just like a given, right? So we definitely wanted to include the droplets again if we're going second. If we're playing against Rytron specifically, we can shut down a Herald and they won't be able to respond with the Herald's effect as long as we send a monster of our own. Uh, same reason I've gotten a bureau in here, kind of, is for Drytron, also Virtual World. Uh, Brilliantly, just there's a lot of decks right now that do a lot of special summoning. Again, I did used to have two Nibiru in here, and in a perfect world, I would like to have two Nibiru still, but I want to keep the deck at 40 cards, and there's really no other card in the main deck I want to take out for the second Nibiru at this point in time. So, uh, I believe it was actually the Tackle Crusader that took the spot of the second Nibiru. So, definitely like the Tackle Crusader over Nibiru number two i would still ideally like to have nibiru number two but right now we can only have one and i'm i'm willing to accept that that's totally fine but yeah like i said at emancipator i used for only my gold run because i figured i would be able to um kind of breeze kind of through uh the decks more quickly because i wouldn't expect to see as many tier decks meta decks i wouldn't expect to see as much you know drytron specifically uh, and those again i figured would be in platinum um i also um knew that at emancipator it's kind of getting a lot of attention lately because baron de Fleur is about to come out and in that regard we've seen a lot of people kind of get frustrated uh with the deck not only for its ability to set up a bunch of negates but also for taking long turns so um, I kind of knew going in that as soon as I started comboing, and again, because I also experienced this while I was playtesting the, the, the deck for weeks uh, throughout Season 3, like, generally speaking, your games with Adam Emancipator don't take as long as you would probably think they would, because as soon as you start comboing and you go off uninterrupted, your opponent usually just concedes when they know they, that you're going to get a full combo off. Um, and so I was actually able to climb from Gold 5 to Plat 5 in just under 3 hours using Adam Emancipator. Uh, which is, I think, probably a little bit faster than I would have done it with Tri Brigade Zodiac, to be totally honest, because with Tri Zoo, you don't have an as obvious I win turn one board. You have to play out the whole game, usually, in order to actually secure the win. Whereas at Emancipator, again, you start comboing off, and as long as you're uninterrupted, usually your opponent will concede halfway through your combo. So um, it's kind of like a paradoxical reason why I ended up picking it in order to climb a bit more quickly. So, okay, now let's take a look at Tri Brigade Zodiac, which once I got to Platinum is the deck that I switched over to. Okay, so here is my Tri Brigade Zodiac build. If you've watched the channel up to this point, you're probably very, very familiar with this deck, and for the most part, this particular build anyway. Um, so yeah, like I said, I switched over from Ad Emancipator to this deck once I got into Platinum. I did actually play a few games in Platinum with Ad Emancipator, just because I wanted to get a feel for what Platinum was like, and I wanted to see if it might be viable uh, to play Ad Emancipator in Platinum. I played five games, and I faced Drytron in three of them, which was more or less what I was expecting to happen. So. Um, yep, after losing <laughs> most of those games there, I switched over to Tri Brigade Zodiac. But then I had a thought to myself, you know, okay, so even though five games is a very, very small sample size, the fact that I had seen the three Tritrons, Drytrons right off the bat, 
more or less confirmed the hypothesis I already had. So I thought to myself, and this was something I'd actually already been thinking about in the weeks leading up, not the weeks, but the week, I should say, leading up to the beginning of season four here was, if I see as much Drytron as I think I'm going to, I should probably just go ahead and craft and include the third Forbidden Droplet in my Tri Brigade Zodiac deck, which I went ahead and did. I was playing three Infinite Impermanence and three Forbidden Droplet for from the end of season two all the way through season three. Um, and that was just my build, but yep, I decided to make that one card difference upgrade, or not even upgrade, just that one card change uh, to take out the third Imperm for the third Droplet. The main reason that I did that is because, um, you know, well, the reason I took out Imperm specifically for the third Droplet is, one, the cards obviously have a similar function, not only in the fact that they negate monster effects, but that they are generally going second cards, as I like to call them as in obviously cards that are better going second than going first, generally speaking. Um, but not only that, um, we're in a meta right now where we're seeing lots of Drytron being played. We've seen a decent uptick in Virtual World. We're seeing an increase in Ad Emancipators being played um, as people like myself are anticipating the release of Baron de Fleury to include in the deck. Uh, more people are picking it up. And obviously Dri Tri Brigade Zodiac is fairly popular right now. So, um, these decks all get decently shut down by Forbidden Droplet, right? Drytron, obviously, we can shut down their Herald with the Droplet. Um, against the Virtual World deck, we can lock down their Shen Shen if, they're, if that is keeping us from loading up our Graveyard. There's also, like, niche case uses. It did come up once where, like, you use an effect to try to negate the VFD, and then obviously they're going to chain the, what is the gate that destroys? Chuchui, I think it's called, uh, to destroy their VFD so it doesn't get negated. Um, having a second negate option to throw in there, like the droplet, you can just chain that to the Chuchui and then just ensure that you negate the, the VFD. Again, that is a bit of a niche case, but it did come up in, in, uh, one of the games for sure on the channel, I think there was two games total, one I might not have included, uh, where that did come up, but, um, yeah, so that is why I included the third Forbidden Droplet in this iteration of the deck. Oh, and then obviously, uh, there's the other matchups as well, right? At Emancipator, they obviously set up a whole bunch of negates on board, so being able to droplet and hit multiple, like, you can droplet up to four sometimes, and you can negate the IP Masquerina, the Dragite, to the Borload Savage, and the Appalooza. That's insane if you actually manage to pull that off. Uh, and still have plays afterward. And then even in the tri and Zodiac Mirror Match, Droplet is still really good because if they try to revolt during your turn to interrupt your plays, you can Droplet and negate the Shurig. Um, and then you can just make sure that your plays go off. You can get rid of their Shurig, set up your own revolt, and then all of a sudden they're the ones on the back pedal where you, whereas, uh, you were before. So... As far as other tech options for my tri Brigade Zodiac, I mean, again, I, this is the same build I've been using, but this is also the same build that I al always use for laddering as well. So um, this build is already kind of fine-tuned for laddering. Didn't have to make too many other tech options. Uh, I've been playing two Nibiru in this deck for a long time. I really, really, really like having two Nibiru in, in this deck because I've got, obviously, the Max Cs. I mean, obviously, pretty much every deck in Master Duel plays Max C, but I think... M Probably more decks should be playing Nibiru than are currently. Um, not two necessarily, but at least one. Because I think it's important that if your opponent quote unquote takes the maxi challenge, where they decide to just play into your maxi and let you draw into a whole bunch of cards while they try to go for game, you should be able to have something that can punish your opponent for playing so hard into maxi. And Nibiru really is the best candidate for that. Obviously, if you're drawing a whole bunch of cards off of maxi, then they're summoning enough for you to be able to Nibiru them. So that's why I like having Nibiru. I try to put it in as many decks that I have maxi in as possible. And in a deck like Tri Brigade Zodiac, which has plenty of room in the main deck for like tech slots, uh, I really like having the two Nibiru here. I think that was very, very important for my climb, was having access to this card as often as I did. Um, the Heartbeast Feather Duster and Lightning Storm are also fairly 
decent tech options. I mean, this deck usually plays the Lightning Storm, but I like having one Harpies and one Lightning Storm specifically instead of like two Lightning Storm or Harpies and Raigeki because I like the flexibility of Lightning Storm being able to blow out either back rows or uh, monsters. I also talked about this when I talked about having Lightning Storm and Ad Emancipators. I just like the flexibility of Lightning Storm a whole lot. Um, but obviously, it's not always live, and especially with Tenki, uh, it can sometimes get in the way. Now, granted, we do have, like, Droplets, and, um, what is the other card we send Tenki with? Why am I blanking on this? Um, oh, the Double Dragon Lord, that's right. Uh, we have Double Dragon Lord and Droplets to get rid of Tenkis on our side of the field to potentially clear out of the way for Lightning Storm. Um, but still, when I was playing two Lightning Storm, because I did used to have two Lightning Storm in this deck, when I was playing two, I just found it was a dead draw far more often, so that's why I like having one Lightning Storm and one Harpy's Feather Duster, is because Harpy's is, you know, more often than not you're using Lightning Storms on back rows anyway, so it's better to have the Harpy's, um, and obviously the Harpy's doesn't come with a condition attached, so if you're you know, thinking, oh, well, if you're wondering or if you're worried about conditions, why not just play a Raigeki and a Harpies? Again, I just really, really like the flexibility of Lightning Storm as opposed to Raigeki. And again, generally speaking, we're more concerned about blowing out our opponent's back row in this deck than we are their face-up monsters. So, let's see. Um, I think that pretty much is covers, you know, all the tech options for that I picked specifically for laddering with this deck. Um... So I guess that is just another long-winded way of giving another general tip, which is you want to be building your decks specifically for ladder, right? We want to be including cards that are able to help us in a variety of scenarios because, you know, ladder is best of one format. So we have to be in our main deck prepared for scenarios like going first versus going second, playing against different styles of decks, things I touched on earlier. You know, we don't have a side deck to go into for games two and three necessarily. Well, but not even necessarily, we just don't at all, so. Okay, let's see. I think that covers just about everything I wanted to go over in this video. Um, yeah, no, I think I talked about pretty much everything I wanted to. Oh, there was one, oh, that's right. I knew there was like one more general tip I wanted to give. Um, and this is one that you've probably heard before, but it's it's one you've probably heard, but it's hard to take to heart. And that is to just make sure to pace yourself and take breaks if you need to. And I know, I know, because I've been in this mentality too, where it's like, what kind of a tip is that? If I'm trying to ladder as quickly as possible, why would I want to take a break? I could just be spending that time playing. Like, sure, even if I'm losing, as long as I play more games, I'll eventually get more wins. And Generally speaking, yeah, it, it can be about quantity versus quality sometimes, whereas if you play enough games, you know, as long as your win rate is over 50%, you will eventually get to Platinum 1. But if you are looking to climb quickly, you need to play a lot of quality games. And uh, if you're fatigued, you're not going to play quality games. Like, you know, there were a couple of points where I stopped in my climb. So, yeah, it, I, I got to Plat 1 within 13 hours, but I did not play for 13 hours straight. I played for about three hours, got up to platinum from gold. Uh, then I actually stopped to make the Adam Emancipator video. That was kind of a break in of itself that I wasn't, you know, having to think about the game in, in real time. Uh, from there, I played a few more hours. I stopped and, you know, ate a little bit. Played a few more hours. I stopped and ate. And then actually after I stopped and ate the second time, I went to go play again. And then I realized, like, my head just felt heavy. Like, I was having a hard time concentrating during the game. Um, those are things you definitely need to watch out for. If you start to notice those things about yourself as you're playing, then yeah, you should definitely stop and uh, take a break. And that's exactly what I did. I turned off the, you know, I closed out of the game. I actually went and lied down in my bed, turned the lights off in my room, and just watched YouTube for about an hour. Um, not even anything Yu-Gi-Oh related. I just watched other random YouTube videos uh, just to give my mind a break from thinking about the game. And then, as soon as I'd done that, uh, not as soon, but, you know, I gave myself the appropriate amount of time. After about an hour, I realized, okay, my head actually feels fine, uh, and I feel more alert than I did before. So, from there, I, you know, got up, turned the light back on, went back to the desk, boom, started playing. And then it was, like, maybe an hour and a half later that I actually reached Platinum 1. So, um, yeah, those breaks, stopping to take those breaks is more important than you probably think it is. Um, it's also important to address anything that comes up that might be a distractor. Like if you start to get a little bit hungry, stop and eat. Because if you, 
if your stomach growls in the middle of a game, that's going to be, you're going to think like, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, shoot, I really need something to eat. Then, boom, all of a sudden you're not thinking about the game anymore. Um, you know, if you nod off, if for even if you start nodding off, you should definitely just stop playing because you're definitely not playing optimally at that point. But, um, yeah, just, you know, if you feel like you got to go to the bathroom, obviously, you know, finish the game out unless your opponent's comboing for a long time. But, like, address that. Don't put it off to play more games. Address any other outs, outlying factors that could distract you and then start climbing. Okay, so now I think I've talked about pretty much everything I want to, and looking at my timer, wow, this video went on way longer than I thought it was going to. I honestly thought I would be lucky to get up to like 25, maybe 30 minutes, and now I'm coming up on 40, so, well, not quite 40, more like 35, you know what I mean. Anyway, um, I'm just going to go ahead and end it off here and just kind of stop my rambling at this point. Um, if you guys liked this video, do let me know in the comments as I am aiming to make more of these general tips and tricks kind of videos as opposed to talking about decks specifically. Um, obviously in the future I'd like to have more visually going on as I talk about the decks as opposed to me just sitting on, or not the decks, as I talk about the games, uh, the gameplay tips. And um, yeah, I do plan to address that in the throw together this kind of proof of concept video so to speak. Um, if there's anything I missed or anything, any questions you have about laddering, uh, you can feel free to ask me those in the comments as well. And I can address those there. Or if there's enough of them, I could even make, you know, another video following up and addressing your guys' questions that way. Um, we'll just see how it goes. So, yep, that is going to do it for this video, though. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm super appreciative if you watch all the way to the end, especially for commenting and subscribing, but don't feel like you have to. As long as you're along for the ride with me, that is perfectly fine with me. Um, but without further ado, this is XLex, signing out, and I hope you have yourselves a fantastic day.